<clears throat> okay, so that's us recording and um, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for another um, conversation in Three Principles Conversation. And, and today I'm delighted that uh, we're being joined by Barbara Smith. Um, I, I, Barbara, I, I heard on, a, on another webinar probably a couple of years ago now and I was just um I, I I love the way on that particular webinar you talked about recovery Barbara I just thought it was there was just such intelligence common sense experience but also just such a um a lovely warm feeling and um I, and I've really enjoyed our conversation since we've had it we've had a couple I think and um so I'm delighted that you agreed to to do the call tonight um and that I've just got to remind myself of the topic which is um why nature trumps psychology um so I'm really looking forward to what you have to say about that and um, I'm going to hand it over to you you may want to say a little bit about yourself or in whatever whatever way that you want to handle it Barbara and everybody's muted at the moment but if you have questions I know that Barbara's very open to them and um, I, I will also sort of come round again as it were and, and invite questions later on so Barbara over to you sounds good thank you thank you for inviting me this is great I love I love the opportunity to see people around the world it's one of the things that's opened up for me so dramatically from my little world of practice here in, in the States. So it's very exciting. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ivan. So um, <clears throat> just a little bit about myself. I am a um, psychotherapist by training, a social worker, social work background. And I have been doing um, psychotherapy of various sorts for 38 years before I found the principles. That's a long time. I don't know that I've met anybody yet who's had that long before they figured it out, but um, I, I, was, I had a really booming practice for a lot of years. I, I was, I, you know, I didn't have any room for anybody new because everybody kept coming back. And um, I thought that made me a really good psychotherapist. Uh, that, that was my badge of honor that I had this booming practice and everybody kept coming back and some people came back for lots of lots and lots of years um, so a, a few years ago about five or six years ago well maybe a little longer than that now I started to get really tired got really burned out I thought what what are we doing quite frankly it was getting a little boring listen listening to some of these stories over and over and over again and I knew that I couldn't be effective doing what I was doing without you know without really this unconditional positive regard and love for my clients but I just thought you know I feel like I'm pouring water through sand I mean we're just going over the same territory this is this is crazy you know it's not helping them it certainly isn't helping me um, so I I just I was thinking about leaving the field. I was going to become an herbalist. <laughs> Thought that seemed like a really good idea. And um, and then, as often happens, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I was introduced to the principles, um, kind of kicking and screaming. I mean, I, I well dragged in at least. Um, I I have been a spiritual seeker my whole life, and I. I've been around a lot of gurus, and the woman who introduced me to Annika Herwood, who was my uh, initial mentor, um, you know, was telling me this woman had changed her life, and this thing had changed her life, and I was like, yeah, right, okay, whatever. You know, I've been around enough of that. I'm all set. But um, something that I heard in that conversation just really took root for me in a way that I just kept going. And I, um, I really didn't have the money to keep going and I didn't, really, I didn't really know what we were doing, but I just, for some reason, there was something there that kept pulling me back and pulling me in. And, um, but I was doing, you know, I had 38 years of experience at that point of all of my little tools and tricks of the trade. And I've been trained in just about every type of psychotherapy you could imagine. And, um, you know, so I kept 
oh, it's like this, it's like that, it's like young, it's like, you know, mindset, it's like, you know. And finally, Annika just said, you know, like, stop. You have to, you have to, you're going to have to hear something different here. You got to listen. And when I finally did calm down enough to listen, um, everything changed for me, uh, personally, professionally. Um, and so I guess what I wanted to sort of talk about today was some reflections that I had while I was recently um, in the Azores. Um, Christian had asked me to come up with what I wanted to talk about, and I didn't really know, but I, I just kind of was listening. My partner, Ed, and I have bought a house recently in the Azores, and the Azores, if, if anyone knows anything about the Azores, um, they're these beautiful volcanic archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And in this unbelievably beautiful place, you are very much immersed in the natural world. Um, and I could start to see things with so much clarity around how um, this misunderstanding that we had about psychology um, was taking us out of the natural order. And so as you observe sort of the natural order, how things are designed to work in the natural world, you realize that we just took this wrong turn in psychology. Um, one of the things that I think is really, um, it was an innocent wrong turn. We didn't know. I mean, I, everyone I knew, and I know lots and lots of really wonderful people who, who would have given anything and, and really devoted their whole lives to, um, you know, trying to help people and trying to alleviate suffering. And we worked hard at it. We really did. And we really searched. We really spent a lot of money. We did a lot of training to make people, to help people feel better. I was, you know, that was the goal. That was where we were trying to head. And um, so, you know, again, when I talk about this, I hope it doesn't come across as being negative, but I think what I've seen is an evolution of thinking around the whole field of psychology. Um, and we, you know, we, somewhere along the line, the field of psychology got grafted onto the medical model. Um, when I was in graduate school in the 1970s, we weren't allowed to diagnose people. It was, um, I mean, you would flunk your course if you ever started tossing around diagnoses. And um, because they felt it was, um, it was labeling people, it was keeping people stuck, it was really um, a negative, um, a negative thing to do and, and not, a, not something that um, focused on people's internal health. Well, in those 40 years, at least in the States, and, I, and from what I understand in other countries around the world, the medical model got grafted onto um, the field of psychology too. And we um, now, the more diagnoses I can give someone, the better off I am with the insurance companies because they're not going to come after me. If you've got five diagnoses, they're going to leave me alone because they know you're really got a problem and I, you need what, what I'm offering and what they're paying for. And so the whole model just, you know, we have all these diagnoses, we have all these um, medications, we have all these hospitals, we have all these treatment centers, we have all these types of psychotherapy. Now it's over 600 and counting. Um, and yet people around me were not looking like they were getting a whole lot better. Um, you know, there was, it just seemed like we were headed in the wrong direction. Um, and so I see, again, that was part of my burnout. Like, what are we doing? All these people would come in, I would get these piles of notes that saying, oh, anxiety, depression, anxiety, and depression. <laughs> you know, and people were on meds, meds, meds. You couldn't find a psychiatrist to give you enough meds for these people. You couldn't even find a psychiatrist because they were all burning out. So um, again, it just looked like this mess to me. 
And the direction that we started going in was, I think, a good direction. We were headed in the direction of, of spirituality. It was sort of the psychology du jour um, was to, to look at your spiritual um, nature and, and more wisdom based um, thinking in the field. Um, but, you know, I would, I would, ha we had meditation groups at the office, you know, people would come and they'd meditate for a while and then they'd drop out and they'd say, I can't meditate. I didn't do it enough. I should have done it more. And, you know, and certainly for me, I, when I would try to meditate, I would just be a wreck because I would just be like, oh, I have this monkey mind, it's jumping all over the place. Look at look at this, you know, I can't do this. I'm like so distracted, I must have ADD. It must have been because my mother drank when she was pregnant with me and you know. And my mind would just be like crazed, but I would then try to get people to meditate because I knew somewhere that a quieter mind was gonna help them in some way. So in the midst of all this sort of turmoil and chaos about What's, what's working? What's not working? Why isn't it working? What, what, what are we doing? You know, along came uh, this, this wonderful understanding and this real evolution of seeing this new paradigm in the way we work. And what that does is that it aligns us with the way the natural world really works. Okay. That in this concept that we develop that we are all broken and there's something wrong. And because there's something broken and wrong, there's something then we have to do to fix it. That's what the medical model is. That's what Western medical medicine does. So they tell you you're broken, you, you know, there's something wrong with you. You have this wrong with you and that wrong with you. We're focusing on that. We're looking at that. That's where we've been looking. And, um, when you look at that, of course, that's what you see. So we we saw that, and we and we lost sight of. Oh, wait a minute. There's some, you know, nature. I, I heard this wonderful talk by this botanist that I that I sort of follow, and he says, you know, the earth doesn't make mistakes. Nature doesn't make mistakes. We weren't made broken. You know, our lives, our bodies aren't made to not function. Our bodies aren't made broken. You know, just looking at the human body and how remarkable the human body is and how we really now, we really think that we probably know less than 10% of all the interactions, these very subtle, incredible interactions that our organs have and that are um, the way things work. I, when I was very ill a few years ago and I, I became very interested in the immune system. So I went to two or three or four workshops, I can't remember now, on the immune system. Well, you would listen to research for eight hours, or <laughs> six hours. And at the bottom line, everybody would, at the end would say, well, I don't know, we, we, nobody knows. You know, what we're sort of coming up with is that at least there are two, if not three or four or five immune systems that somehow work together in this amazing way, you know? So my father and grandfather were old country doctors before this whole field of um, the, the huge pharmaceutical industry that had taken over. And they both were very respectful. <laughs> of the human body and its ability to heal itself, its ability to, you know, our, our physicals when I was growing up were at the kitchen table, like how tall are you, you know, how much do you weigh and how do you feel? That was it. And everything else was normal, 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 you know, because he knew intuitively, he knew from the observation that they had before this medical um, you know, superstructure that, that the human body is an amazing organism that we do get over stuff. You know, we get, we get over it. We get, we get beyond things. 
doesn't mean some things won't take us down and that we need to pay attention to where, you know, where disease is happening and be, and be in touch with our body and what's going on with it. But for the most part, you know, we're designed, our, our design is that we're going to heal. We have this immune system or these many immune systems. And when we just are in alignment with that, we do very well. You know, it's when we start intervening. <laughs> most, most anybody who's on a lot of medications will tell you that a lot of the symptoms are caused by the medications, right? So once we start intervening with nature, we get ourselves out of alignment with the way that it is designed to work. So in the field of psychology, I think that's what we did. Again, we got out of the alignment with this sense that we are optim we have this capacity for optimal functioning. And we became so fixated on what was broken that that became the reality. And that is really the reality that's driving um, the field at this point. Um, only that's beginning to shift with this new understanding, with this paradigm shift of looking at our innate health, our innate psychological immune system. And as we start to see that, we get, you know, people in my practice, I can tell you my practice, like shriveled up in three weeks after I came back and I switched from the old paradigm to the new paradigm. I kid you not. I had more clients than I could ever count. And within three weeks, they were all leaving because they're like, I feel fine. I'm good. Thanks. And I'm and I remember talking to Annika and to Keith and Valda and saying, um, uh, hello, now what? You know? And Keith just very kindly said, uh, you need more clients. <laughs> I was like, okay. And you know, over the last four years since learning this, that's what's happened is that the stream of people who learn about this and hear about this and see, oh, I'll have what they're having, you know, start showing up and they come in, they learn this and they they move on. And it's just really quite remarkable. You know, when we're not swimming against the tide, when we put people, we show people, oh, this is how it works. And you know, this is, it only works one way. And you've just been working with this big misunderstanding that somehow your feelings and your suffering are coming from the circumstances in your life. Oh, that's not true. Oh, okay. Well, then that takes a little while to sort of, sometimes it takes a little while for people to, to sort of wrap their head around that. Since we have been working with this misunderstanding innocently since really the beginning of time. Um, but once, you know, people start to see this with more and more clarity, oh, oh, wow, yeah, you're right, it can't be, it can't, it never has worked like that, even though all our popular songs are that, you know, you broke my heart, I just did a retreat last weekend, Christian, I had, we had so much fun, this is the second time we've done it, I make everybody go out and find an outside-in song, <laughs> you know, you broke my heart, you, you hurt my feelings, you know, you're the center of my life. You're, you know, ruining. And uh, we have a blast. We dance. Probably more of a challenge to find one that isn't. <laughs> Actually, we started, we started a whole series of them. We now have a playlist of inside out songs and a playlist of outside in songs. And we danced. We had a blast. It was a lot of fun. We really did. We had a great time. Um, but it's kind of fun. It's it, it, Try it. Check it out. See how many inside out songs you find. There aren't as many. They're outnumbered by the thousands. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's been a part of our misunderstanding, you know, it just because it feels so true that our feelings are coming from our circumstances. And, you know, and I can say this because, because I am a psychotherapist and I, and I, did it for so long that we contributed to that, that misunderstanding. Um, continue to, the field itself continues to. Uh, because I worked when I, I had a change in my life, I moved back to my sort of roots a few years ago, well, about 15 years ago now, and I ended up working in a, 
in a local mental health addictions clinic. Um, I hadn't worked for anyone else in many years, but I, my practice took a little while to get rebuilt. And so I was working at this clinic and we took a 35 page history. 35 page history of all of the things that happened in your life that contributed to your unhappiness and your suffering. And it seemed a little ridiculous at the time. I didn't stay there very long. I never quite got through 35 pages um, and ended up leaving. But, you know, that's kind of the direction we've gone in. We, we've looked so much at this misunderstanding that, oh, this happened to you and that happened to you. And it was, you know, your trauma from childhood potty training and your, you know, your mother's alcoholism and your father's, you know, was mean to you. And, you know, I mean, and we would just gather all this information and, and pull together this, this concept that that was what did it. That's what screwed you up. That was what it looked like to us, right? Um, certainly that was true for me. I felt the same way in my life and in my clients. People would come in and say, oh, I know that people can't make me feel this. And I'd say, oh, yes, they can. They, they can make you feel that. They, they have, I, would, I would say this. They have the key to your control panel. And they can make you feel terrible. You know? So I, I just didn't know that that wasn't true. That that was this old paradigm that we were trained in, classically trained in. And once you correct that misunderstanding, once you have this simple blueprint at your fingertips, and I use the diagram that was developed by Keith and Balda in my office that just points us to how it is. It's just this very simple design, like really all in nature. Nature at its foundation is very beautiful. You know, it's got very simple principles that, that guide it. And when you see that, that things, one of the most powerful things for me in seeing the weather just in the Azores is watching the energy of it. People will say, what's the weather like in the Azores? And I'll go, yeah. <laughs> what? I said, yeah, it's weather. <laughs> it's moving. You know, you don't like it, hang around. Now it's pouring, now the sun's out, now we have a rainbow, now it's raining, now there's four layers of clouds, now you see through that and it's moving, now we're having big, you know, it's moving. So you're, you're in touch with this nature, this energy, this flow that's, that's moving around you, moving through you, moving through all the time. And when we start to see that design in ourselves, wow, oh, okay, this is moving through me. This isn't stuck here because I now have this clinical diagnosis that tells me that I have this thing that I'm now going to carry around for the rest of my life, whether it's alcoholism or clinical depression or post-traumatic stress disorder or whatever else we, we labeled it in an attempt to try to describe what we were saying. But once you see, oh, no, 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 it's, it doesn't, it just simply doesn't work that way. It never did, it never will. You know, it, it just only works one way. Then the mind starts to sort of reorganize itself. Now we're, we're bringing things into focus in a way that we didn't have focus before. We were looking in the wrong direction. We were looking this way and that way and upside down and inside out. And we, were, we, weren't, we didn't have any focus. We just kept searching. And if you keep looking in the wrong place for something, you're never going to find it. But once you see it, oh, wow, yeah. We are really, truly, a, we are nature. We are a part of that same energetic, same on a cellular level. There is no separation. It is who we are and how it works. Then we come into an alignment that is, that just kind of, 
puts your spine back in here. I kind of think like when my back hurts, I'm, it's usually because I'm doing this and then the feedback mechanism is, oh, okay, don't do that, do this, okay. Now my back is in alignment, I'm, I'm, the pain's not there anymore. Uh, lovely, uh, yeah, just so much, so much in that, Barbara. And I, I was thinking, I just had a, a conversation recently with a with a parent. She was she was on a, a group thing I was involved in, and but um, she was she came up and and this was all new to her. It was kind of her first. It was her very first session, and she she, but she kind of instinctively knew there was something there for her, and it was a very short session, less than an hour. Um, I said, "What about my? You know, I've got my teen, and and she's really, really moody, and she's accusing me of not not listening." to her and and um and it, it, it was those, it's, it's those very simple things that you're, you're talking about so so something that i often um use is that same weather metaphor with people that you know like like everything else in nature our moods and our thinking goes up and down up and down and up and down and and it's not predictable it's reliable but it's not predictable it's more like a heartbeat or the weather than say the phases of the moon or the tide or whatever and it just, it just that alone, I could see that was beginning to take something off this woman's mind because she was kind of joining the dots of all the difficult things. And we looked at sometimes when there was connection, um, and um, that, and and she was kind of missing those because she was pathologized. You know, what does this mean? And 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 it made complete sense to her the bit because because she felt that she was a, a you know basically a good parent, and um, and I'm sure she was, but what her kid was doing was you know she was as, as all of us i guess do and certainly i did before i had this understanding because i didn't know where my pain was coming from it was just automatically attributed to what was around me and again this woman could see that that's what her daughter was doing and there was an innocence in that you know and and it's it's that same thing of just what you described of awareness of how the system actually works is is the thing um it's not effort it's not having a, a, a doing it differently it's not positive thinking but that awareness of how the system actually works including somebody else's system shifts our experience of it so enable in, in seeing that, that that this um it was true of true of her her team true of herself that this woman had a, a just a lightning you know, and, and she said, I, you know, I have been wondering whether I should send her for counselling. And, and, you know, and it was just clear that she was, that was no longer on the, on the agenda. And, um, yeah. yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It really is. And that's really how it works. Again, when we just put ourselves in the alignment with which we're designed, it's kind of a non-issue. You don't really spend a lot of time worrying about your heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or whether your, you know, whether your lungs are working. I mean, if you do, if you start, I mean, one of the metaphors that I really use a lot is if you start fixating on your, your breathing, you're going to start hyperventilating. <laughs> Don't fixate on your thinking. Just leave it alone. It's it's doing its job. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So that and then when when you just give people that now. You know, there's some people who can't see it. They're very, I, you know, I've had had a number of people come in and say, no, no, no. You know, I have this. I have, I am, you know, I come from a long line of, I, you know, you know, my doctor said, you know, and I'm okay. Yeah. You know, that is, that's where people are at their level of understanding. Yeah. But when you can let go enough or listen enough and keep looking in this direction and you see how really what my father and grandfather saw how you know really intervention free it is once everything is in the alignment that it's designed to do our lives just become a whole lot easier. I mean, there's just so much less on our mind. There's so much, you know, my clients always say and at the, at the retreat, everybody's favorite line was, oh, my favorite part is there's nothing to do. <laughs> you know, we used to give everybody so many things to do. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 
And so that just puts more on your mind and more on your mind. I didn't do it. I didn't do it enough. I should have done mm -hmm. it more. Maybe if I did it at bedtime, if I should, you know, maybe I'll try that. I said, no, no. <laughs> maybe if I go to a yoga place, you know. And then people's minds are just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 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 was that is. I so identified with that too because I had you know twenty years of see seeking before I encountered the principles, and the kind of um, mantra was uh, you know amongst my um, fellow travelers, if you like in the outside in journey um the only way the only way out is through except nobody ever got through <laughs> and so in my own case i think like you say i oh, a bit i need a bit more of this or obviously i did not completely commit to that course of therapy or something like that you know and it just as a, and it never until i came across the principles i was going to say it never occurred to me that um there was something I missed, but actually it did. I began to have insights um, a few years before I, I got into this and thinking, uh, you, you know, th th there's something wrong here. And I began to have the insight of I've got to start listening to myself, that, you know, that inner voice, rather than trying to you know, apply somebody else's program or course or way of thinking. Or, yeah. Yeah. And that was what I had learned too in my um, in my journey with illness was you know when you physical illness when you are listening to everyone else's theories and you know you can hear one person say you know absolutely you must eat bananas three times a day <laughs> and the next person will say absolutely never touch a banana it'll throw your blood you know <laughs> and then you'll hear somebody say oh you must eat grains and then some oh you can't ever eat grains and you know you could go crazy listening yeah. to people and where I had what I actually I was starting to write a book and I realized what I was writing a book about was intuition. Mm. I was writing a book about listening for what my body was telling me, not what somebody else told me was right, because there are all kinds of opinions out there. But my, I knew, I knew, I, I knew when it was time to stop taking antibiotics. I knew when what I was doing wasn't making me feel well. Mm. And so I was, I was really looking at in that direction. And that was actually the thing that when we've had our first conversation with Annika, that really lit, lit things up for me was she talked about intuition. And I was like, yeah, you know, we didn't talk about intuition in psychotherapy. Mm. We never talked about that. Yeah. We talked about following suggestions and how hard you were working mm, mm. and what you needed to do next. Mm. But we never talked about following your intuition, about knowing how well you're designed, how resilient you are by nature. Yeah. You didn't have to go to a course on resilience. Mm -hmm. You are of the essence of resilience, like everything else in nature. Yeah. Lovely. Barbara, I'm conscious that, that other people in the call might like to, to um, come in or have some questions and it would be really delightful to, to hear from you. Oh, hi, Andrea. I just see you joined us. <laughs> um, um, uh, so please, um, if you would like to either ask something or share something or something that you've maybe heard from listening to Barbara, please do come in. Hi, can I can I ask something? Yes. Of course. Hi, Ivan. Listening to you, so thank you for sharing what you've seen. And I um, I'm, I the first time the the first time I saw that um, there was going to be a call with a psychotherapist that has uh, been in psychotherapy for thirty eight years. I was uh, really interested to join in and and uh, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions in relation uh, in relation to uh, psychology after you came across the principles. Um, I'm I'm interested to hear because I I came across the principles three years ago and um, it's a it's a really and I feel like it's a really simple and interesting 
way of seeing life. And um, what uh, what I'm interested, in, uh, what I saw, uh, I, I started I started studying psychology after I came across the principles, and I got interested in human uh, centered therapy with uh, uh, the in the work of Carl Rogers and uh, and uh, Abraham Maslow and what i what i wanted to to ask you is uh have you especially their later works when they where they talk about i feel like they talk about the same things we are talking about the looking at the uh, at humans uh and from where we come from uh, looking looking at the energy of life not the neurosis and not the diseases that are um, motivating us in life uh, i feel like they they saw something different so i wanted to ask you um i guess what do you um what do you think about that and um i don't know really uh I guess that's the because we uh, I can I can hear that the, uh, and what you were saying about psychology I feel like what you're talking about is mainstream psychology and I can see that there are a lot of problems in mainstream psychology but I also see that there are a lot of teachers a lot of psychologists like Carl Jung like Abraham Maslow Carl Rogers and their work listen and reading reading their work after i came across the principles was really interesting to me because it feels like they're pointing to the same thing i guess and uh, i just wanted to to ask you if you feel like it's it's different or i don't know just your take on it I'm not sure, but yeah. It's a good question. And um, I guess what I see now, um, and, and again, I've studied all of those people over the years. Um, everywhere I look now, I see wisdom. You know, I can, I can now look at the wisdom of what Carl Rogers said. And I can look at the wisdom contained in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I can look at the wisdom of that. But what, what we have throughout life, Sid Banks said that all wisdom is tainted by human thought. So we have, there's truth, there's there's the principles of how things work that are preform, right? And I think Jung certainly was the closest that I ever saw who was able to see that. He was able to see, you know, because his work was so spiritually based, um, he was able to see beyond form. But he also then created his particular version of psychotherapy. So we have, we have, and I hope this is helpful. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty deep subject that probably could be its own conversation. So you have, you know, people, you see truth everywhere. People have seen it since the beginning of time. But until, for me, until I learned how it works, until I learned the underlying principles behind how it works, I wasn't able to sort out people's opinions from truth. So just for instance, uh, I think one of the great spiritual masters, if you will, this time is Eckhart Tolle. You know, Eckhart Tolle has an amazing um, visual picture of how 
this all works. But then he has his take on it. And so you have to do this and you have to practice that and you have to try this. And this is the way, that, you know, he has his own take on it. So the, the, the metaphor that, well, not metaphor, but the example that I teach people all the time is in the United States, um, Thomas Jefferson actually created his own copy of the Bible. It's called the Jeffersonian Bible. He went through the Bible and he cut out all the human contamination and put together what he believed was divinely created. So I think there's a great deal of divine inspiration. Certainly, you know, Christian and I have had this conversation about the 12 steps in Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, there was no question that Bill W. had a divine inspiration, as did Sid Banks. Divine inspiration. And then he took that divine inspiration and built something that was, you know, man-made and tainted by that. So it doesn't mean there isn't truth that's so deeply embedded in all of these, you know, that they're able to glimpse it and they see it and some of it, you know, you just, I mean, I, my whole house is filled and my office is filled with these quotations. I'm like this too shall pass. Okay. Well, you know, I would tell that to clients, yeah, this too shall pass. And I would see it. Oh, this too shall pass. Now it's like, oh, oh, now I see it. This too shall pass because it does pass. That's the nature of it. Oh, now it becomes clear to me. Now I see. Does that does that help, Ivan? Does that? I um I really like uh, I really like where you're pointing at uh, that. And what I what I heard from while you were telling your story, uh, I heard that. And this is a common thing I hear about uh, when people talk about came ac coming across the principles. It's like they see something true and nobody can explain it. Nobody can explain what they saw, but they know it's true. And you can, uh, like you said, you went to all this, this, this long, uh, this lifelong spiritual journey and you didn't get anything from it. And then at one point, you, you probably got a lot, but at one point you see something, you saw something really true about, about that. And you, you saw something true that I cannot explain what, what, what people see when they see it, but it's a it's an interesting thing and now we call it the three principles and uh we and we also get uh we also we also sometimes lose it talking about the principles you know we we talk about them like it is something but what we really we, what, what is really interesting to see because I can feel it in in the in the cover in the stories people tell is that they see something true and I don't know what it is but it's a it's an interesting thing and um, yeah I and uh, I I um, get what you're saying about you start seeing wisdom all around you. I guess uh, what I well, uh, what I what helped what helped me what the principles helped me was to uh, to be able to swallow the fish and spit only the the bones you know and take the the good stuff. Great metaphor. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and in AA they have a wonderful wise slogan that says "Take what you like and leave the rest." Yeah. Right. So there's there's great wisdom all around us. And when we see the principles behind the human condition, then for me, it acts like this huge 
lens that just keeps bringing things into focus. Bring, oh, that, oh, that, oh, that's how wow, that works. That's, oh, now I see that. Not only in my own life personally, but like, oh, yeah, that's why that's true. Now I, now I see it. I was just talking with a friend of mine the other day about I can read things and I and I tend to read things that are fairly deep. You know, I'm reading this thing right now on plant intelligent and the plant intelligence on the in the imaginal world. You know, it's like a pretty heavy book, but I can see where he like absolutely this is you know this is the way it is, and then. He'll go off on his tangent about, you know, something he made up. And you can, I can see it so clearly now. Oh, no, you, you, you just made that up. That's, that's, not, that's not contained in this system that you're trying to describe. And so I can take what I like out of that and see, and I can see it. That's the important thing now. I can see it. Oh, that's wisdom. Okay, that's maybe just your opinion. And anything that really, once we get into form to try to describe this, it, it is kind of coming through our own filters. Great question, Ivan. Great subject. Great. <laughs> and, a lovely, and a lovely response. A lovely response. Just so you know, I've been this my retreat that I just did. I was going to call it Mining for Wisdom, but I think I'm going to wait for next year for that one. But that's what we're going to call. That's what I was going to call it. Mining for Wisdom. Yeah, Mining for Wisdom, where you can just go in and dig it out of the earth. It's all around us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if there was a question, but yeah, but uh, it was a, it was a nice uh, talk. Well, it gave us an opportunity to mine a rich theme. <laughs> Just, <laughs> thank you. If you have more of a question, if you want more clarity around what it was you asked, Ivan, and I didn't and I didn't get to that, feel free to contact me, and I'd be glad to have that conversation with you. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, Andrea, come on. I just unmute yourself. Hi. Sorry, I was late joining you tonight. Um, just when you were speaking about how we are part of nature and how uh, we can recover ourselves, it just was making me think of last week when I had a migraine. And I've had them from a really young age, but, but I don't get them very often now. So I had quite a bad one last week. And... I was lying in my bed and I couldn't stop thinking about the pain because it was so bad and I was I was sick because of it and I uh, and I knew that I had to like somehow I had to stop thinking <laughs> thinking about it and focusing on it and try and get to sleep and I just didn't seem to be able to do it because it was so imp like overpowering um but eventually I just thought right just be in the moment be in the moment so I was just like imagining like my like the comfiness of my bed all around me and all that so the next thing I knew I'd fallen asleep and then I woke up in the early hours of the morning and the pain was just completely gone and that is normal for me that the only thing that will get rid of it is a, a night's sleep but for the first time ever I just thought about how amazing that is like how amazing that all it needed was sleep and my body somehow just regenerated and just got rid of that pain all by itself um and it, 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 yeah I just don't, I don't know why it just struck me for the first time ever like just how amazing that was and it also reminded me of the first time when I was expecting my my first son and I just remember it was the first time in my life that I became so in love with my body and how amazing the human body is that the changes you go through in pregnancy and um it just knows how to do it it just all these changes you don't decide um it just does it in its own time and it does it perfectly and even down to 
I never liked broccoli before I was pregnant and then all of a sudden I started eating broccoli and I thought you know it's obviously I was needing folic acid or you know it just I don't know it just amazes me the whole the whole connection well that, that we are just part of nature and I think as humans we forget that an awful lot and see ourselves as separate from it so that was just my my take on it really great thank you for that amazing how the system takes care of itself you know without our intervention again as a psychotherapist i think we thought we had to intervene you know again that was what we just were trained to do we got to intervene we got to make this better we got to fix this you know and then again in in the whole field of diagnosing people we've we've made it we've created this whole system that says how many of this type of feelings at this type of level are you know are okay <laughs> and beyond that you have this wrong with you and that wrong with you instead of saying well you know the whole range of human emotion is fine you know it's, it is it just is it's a whole range of human emotion so when we start interfering with that and start putting our spin on it and analyzing it and you know, making money off of it. It just, we've, we've lost sight of the fact that this design is just awesome. You know, I, I love to, to use this um, to, to tell people this, but the, the root, you've heard probably Sid Banks talk a lot about the root of the word psychology is the logic of the soul that there's a very logical system to this whole thing that again, we're living in the feeling of our thinking. That's just the way it is. That's very logical. There's this sort of roadmap, this blueprint that's extraordinarily logical. So we have the logic of the soul. The psychotherapist at its root is an attendant or a caregiver of the soul. I want to put that on my income tax form because <laughs> I, have to write, I have to write that I'm a psychotherapist and I want, I, I want to change that. I'm wondering what the IRS would do with that, but that's what I, I'm really seriously thinking about doing that this year, but um, oh yeah, what do I do? Well, I'm, I'm an attendant of this soul. <laughs> they'll still take your money. <laughs> yeah, they'll still take my money. Yeah. yeah, I actually have jury duty in a couple of weeks and I have to write that down. <laughs> I'll see if I get picked. Um, uh, you know, and and psychopathology means the suffering of the soul. Mm. You know, wow, we've come a long way <laughs> in the wrong direction to yeah. be calling this everything we're calling it and putting all these labels on it and all this spin on it. So once this 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 incredible clarification that helps you know that, that happens when we see how this works then like Ivan was saying I mean there's so much wisdom in in the people who have been looking for all these years and we can sort out where we sort of went off track and now we have this blueprint for how we get back on track that's easy okay very logical very clear very simple just amazing really amazing and it didn't even need any of my help <laughs> just all i have to do is go like this that's my job i just keep going like this and they go they either look that way or they don't and you know okay that's where they are in their level of evolution that doesn't have anything to do with me either it's not a treatment failure it's not a, it's just you see it you don't right now and, and you may come back in th three years and say oh now i see it or now I'm ready to start looking in that direction. I'm mindful of the time. I know that Krishna needs to get going. Anybody else have anything? I think you've quieted us. Hi. Well. Okay. Oh, um, hi, 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 Brady. Yeah, hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, I was just fascinated when you said that we label everything 
right, to psychotherapy and psychology. And it just takes me back to when I was diagnosed with cancer. And I've been in the principles for quite a few years then, um, probably three years. And um, so I had quite a good grounding in it. But when the consultant said to me, oh, you've got cancer, I just turned around and said, so, what do we do now? It's like the label wasn't there. It didn't matter. It wasn't important. He could have said to me, you've got jam, or he could have whatever. And I, th I just see something about the non-labeling is just so powerful. It's just something passing through. It's not something that's hanging around. It's not there to stay. Yeah. yeah like, when, I tell, when I tell people there's nothing wrong with you, <laughs> that takes a lot off your mind. <laughs> You know, just like with cancer, it puts a lot on your mind when someone tells you you have cancer. When I say, you yeah, know, you don't, no. you know, I know your doctor sent you in with that list of things that are wrong with it. No. Yeah. 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 And then Andrew was talking about her migraine. But when she said she came back to the present moment, then she settled down and went to sleep. Because that is where our power is, is in the present moment. Come back to the now, to where we are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. Thank you for the for for taking the time. Um, it's, it's been a lovely call. I, I suspected it would be. But I really enjoyed it. And um, I don't know if you have any final thoughts just before we we close. No, I you know thank you all for for being here and listening. And yeah, if you have questions or want you know things that didn't get clarified for you or you feel particularly insulted by something I said because your father's a psychiatrist be sure to give me a call uh you know uh because I can tell you that it was uh, people that I have known certainly in my world have done are totally committed people who have absolutely committed their lives to trying to help relieve relieve suffering and now now we have something that really we can it just it works it's it's really quite amazing <laughs> no it works who knew there's nothing wrong oh what do you know so thank you so much for coming and listening yeah thank you thank you all and and, and really a special thank you to you barbara um i'm just going to stop the recording